Well, to talk about the group of seven in Algoma is sort of like talking about Michelangelo and the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> it's the uh, crowning achievement for, for the group of seven. And um, it's the area that really defined their movement, the nationalist movement. And uh, it defined their style as well. Many people, of course, go back and think of, of uh, Algonquin Park as uh, germane to the Group of Seven, but it was uh, um, Algoma, and beginning in 1918, when uh, Lauren Harris first came up here in the spring with uh, Dr. James McCallum, who was his patron, uh, Lauren Harris, who painted occasionally in Algonquin Park, certainly not as much as Tom Thompson had, uh, was, well, to put it bluntly, was depressed. Uh, he had just, uh, he'd been to war, he'd lost his brother at war, and uh, they, the group had lost, or the, the group to be had lost Tom Thompson in 1917, and um, so Algonquin Park had lost its allure they were casting about looking for new areas. Georgian Bay was getting fairly, uh, fairly much cliche for the people who would become the Group of Seven. And uh, they had heard, and I have my suspicions where they may have heard it from, Tom Thompson. They had heard of Algoma and how beautiful it was. And uh, it was an exploratory trip in, in 1918. Actually, uh, it was supposed to have been by car. Uh, <laughs> Uh, McCallum and, and Harris realizing that they weren't going to get very far by car when they arrived here in the spring and uh, made arrangements with the Algoma Central Railway to, uh, well, take a trip as far as the uh, uh, Agawa to, to explore and see if there were painting sites. Obviously, <laughs> they found um, what would become their, their uh, um, their home for the next four years, uh, and in some cases for the next four decades, A.Y. Jackson in particular. Harris was probably informed of Algoma. One, it was, it was in the news a lot. Uh, we tend to forget that Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma was New Ontario at the turn of the century. It was, uh, we were multimodal then. We were a transportation hub, or at least that's what the, uh, the, the, the resource managers at the time thought. Certainly the Clerg Empire, Algoma Steel, and the Helen Mines at, at uh, uh, Wawa, these were to be industrial models for Ontario. And certainly with a name like Harris, who we of course associate with Massey Harris, uh, he would not be unfamiliar with uh, um, industry. And uh, so it, it was for him probably something that was, was fairly topical from growing up. Uh, and also, I suspect, and this is my own theory, um, I suspect he may have heard it from Tom Thompson. We don't associate Tom Thompson with Algoma. Um, and of course, Tom Thompson was not a member of the Group of Seven except in spirit only, uh, having predeceased the formation by three years. However, uh, Tom Thompson had been to Algoma, not to Lake Superior, but in 1912, uh, he, I think it was in September, he and William Broadhead, uh, who was another commercial artist working in Toronto and who had been painting with Tom Thompson in Canoe Lake in Algonquin Park, decided to take a trip up the Canadian National Line. So that was really the first documented, clearly documented case of uh, somebody who would have a profound influence on the Group of Seven coming to Algoma, although uh, he, he may have attempted to go to Lake Superior, he didn't go to Lake Superior. So there, there, there were, uh, between Tom Thompson and, and uh, Harris's knowledge of the Sault Ste. Marie and Algoma as a resource center, there were, there, there were certainly ample uh, opportunity to think about coming here. Also the Prince of Wales, uh, a couple of years before um, before the famous uh, initial boxcar trip by the Group of Seven, uh, the Prince of Wales had arrived here. Um, the Algoma Central Railway itself was really open to business, shall we say, in eight, uh, 1912. It had been surveyed and uh, construction undertaken. 
uh, in, in various um, through, through various stages. Finally, arriving in Hearst, I believe, uh, 1913, 1914, and the Prince of Wales, on a royal visit, actually came to Sault Ste. Marie, boarded a train, petrified the the engineers. The story is that they uh, they had to add extra. Uh, trains for for the entourage of his uh, uh, his honor and uh, his majesty and the um, uh, the engineers weren't quite sure it would make it across the trestle bridge at Montreal River uh, so they were under strict instructions they had done all kinds of surveys of the the, the bridge to, to make sure it was a, it was going to carry the weight and uh, uh, in spite of that they they instructed the train engineers to drive very slowly across the bridge. Uh, in doing so, uh, they, as they crept across the bridge, the train came to a sudden stop and everybody panicked. And it turned out it was the Prince of Wales himself who had pushed, pulled the emergency um, uh, cable to stop the train because there was such a magnificent view from the Trestle Bridge. And I, I, I relay that story only because uh, it's a bit of foreshadowing, because that's the view that the group of seven, uh, particularly J.E.H. MacDonald, painted from. I don't know if he actually went out on the Trestle Bridge too often, although they, they certainly knew the, the schedule of the train. But he, he painted uh, his famous solemn land, uh, uh, looking north from the Montreal River. He painted his famous Montreal River, the, the falls. Uh, from the bridge or very close to the bridge. This is, of course, the falls uh, prior to the dam. And it was uh, riotous, not only in color, but in volume of, of, uh, of water. That painting is at the Art Gallery of Ontario. And um, MacDonald was, was, along with Harris, one of the principal figures uh, in Algoma. He, he came up here as often as he, as he could between 1919 uh, and 1922. He certainly, uh, the painting that we have in our collection was done as a later study in 1926, so he often went back to the theme. But uh, many of the group of seven would refer to Algoma as McDonald's uh, country. Uh, he fell in love with it. It was, I think, for him personally, where he painted his best works. Yes, he went out to the Rockies and he painted some marvelous works there, but it was Algoma that he fell in love with and it was Algoma that, that actually uh, spoke to him in a very real, uh, a real manner, even more so than Lauren Harris. Lauren Harris and, and uh, um, to, to, to think of, of Lauren Harris in terms of Algoma, we think of uh, his many paintings at Batchewana. He would stop the train at Batchewana and paint there. He would uh, venture into Sand River. He and MacDonald went into Sand River uh, and along the Sand River and painted. We normally think, as our historians anyway, of Lauren Harrison, his crowning achievement is, is a little further north around uh, Nays Provincial Park and uh, um, Marathon. But he went from Algoma to Marathon in 1922, so it was. Uh, uh, the, the northern reaches of Algoma and Lake Superior that attracted him. And I, I think those are his uh, most famous paintings.